Hello. Um, yeah, it's recording. Oh. Uh, can you say something? Yeah. Okay. Now I hear. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yes. 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 So. Um, you put you did you fix your problem with the internet thing? Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't fix it, but it came back. So <laughs> so it's good. Good enough. Good enough for now. But it was a bit sketchy. It's, uh, yeah. It was down for like five, ten minutes. <laughs> so I was freaking out. Yeah. I was checking today the document because I wanted to, I was feeling into writing and then so my idea was to put all the my idea was to do what you did basically to put all the links like there so it was good that you put them so then we, all of them are are there it's good yeah 23. yeah i i don't know like what kind of writing i will do <laughs> i am doing um but one thing is um did we talk about this oh yeah we talked about this uh that I put, I uh, yeah, but last time I was in, uh, writing on the etherpad that I was writing about the best practices of best practices, something like that. And I had some examples. I put, I, I, I also add the, do you read in the, I add to the best practices document? Wait, okay. um, I add to the, it's called to the best practices, I guess. I guess it goes to the best practices. Yeah, I add to the uh, beware of copyright. I am copyright. <laughs> I call it copyright. Yeah, yeah, because that section I I added specifically because it's something that you have ideas. I mean, I can write also, but I think uh, you have clearer ideas. Yeah, and actually, and also uh, it was good because then. I check as well today with my, with my subject of copyrights, and then so then I was like, sure, ah, okay, so this is what the law says. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's very funny because at the end, what it happens is, so basically, what it happens is that no, like as long so you you have the right to use somebody's material if it's in parody, but this is a parody is 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 something that you. So you cannot use the straightforward material of somebody else it has to be a parody but then yeah. let's say in youtube you can use it as long as it's not 100 percent normal no so you alter it, the material and then anyway they will let you know the artist and you and at any point anyway the artist can claim the rights which normally might be on their side but it's still like uh, on the european union law it says you can claim you can also exercise your right to your uh, rights and you can say that you were using that as a parody and the funny thing is like the person who decides it was a parody or not is a judge and if you think like i think judges are their sense of humor so it's based on their sense of humor of a judge if if you are the right or if the right of the artist uh artist is the right so i thought it was very funny like at the end is the is is based on the judge sense of humor. I see. Yeah. yeah, that's that's quite interesting because I think I briefly talked about this uh, and at some point. I don't know if it was a, a public chat or behind the scenes or backstage, but there is there is this collective who always works with a lawyer because like they have this you know uh, collaborator a lawyer that they can ask for you know like like when plan they plan the the project or artwork because they yeah. do like an activist kind of things so yeah. it's always on the gray zone and uh they yeah, plan yeah. it carefully with the lawyer because they don't want to get into trouble i mean they get into trouble but they always have to be on the safe side yeah which i think is an interesting idea I mean, we don't have, uh, you know, well, maybe we can have a find a budget to collaborate with the lawyer and see what's the. But it was funny. Like I was reading yesterday, like uh, because still as as well as start writing again a bit of, uh, I start writing on my thesis. Uh, I have the time to write, so to make of the project, uh, uh, yeah, to write the text basically of my thesis for the school. Uh, 
So then I started uh, checking about again, like the, the text of uh, of Martin of post dance in the post dance book. You know what I mean? The last part of wait, I will just bring the. the I don't know, I was supposed to say something. I feel always I have to fill the gap. Yeah, it's funny that you said like, I, I wrote something that I, that I was quite into like the something about a thing. I don't know if you, if you have the time to read. I just and, quickly went through, yeah. Yeah, so then I was like, then this, uh, this thing of mine, a gap, it's something that this, this is in my head often, this, the gap, you know, like mine, the gap. I always have to think in London. Hmm? You know, like you have these things in the metro. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like mind the gap. Yeah. It was so, like, I mean, it works in so many different levels. Yeah. Mind the gap or you die. <laughs> <laughs> but also super well, I mean, in terms of design, it's one of the most beautiful exercises that I found. Like, so, um, Yeah. So, I, so yeah, so I was talking about like, so you have movement research, which is the book that I have for you, like that we wrote this in, in Puff. I mean, and then uh, you have the post dance. There was the previous book. Oh, okay. So this, this is from, this is from 2017 and it's published in the MDT, which is the university in Stockholm of dance. And okay. this is from 2018. So um so then i would hear there's a chapter specific like the last part of the chapter is about is, is martin saying about post dance and advocacy on post dance but so is it the, has, the, 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 there's a pdf about that or the, yeah i think i send you both like i think i send you the pdf of this one uh, but, but the post dance that's available online is that part of that book or is it something else because this he, he thing, has the... these both things are online. Okay. I mean, I think I. Uh, yeah. I no, I'm just asking I, because uh, I read read the you know the chapter about the post dance and advocacy from him. Uh, yeah. So but, this is from uh, post dance. Okay. So maybe it's part of that book. Yeah. Yeah. The movement research is more than new one, and it's I will say is it has a different structure. This is. This is the is when in a way he's in, you read the chapter no then in a way like he's more trying to propose the the term of post dance and then he goes why and so on so yeah but anyway in that chapter he mentioned about the uh, advocacy and avocado as fruit mm. and so then I found very interesting like I mean yeah. I think this is funny because some of the things, for instance, like that he says in post dance, they're a bit co complex in the way how the language that he uses in movement research or actually in the podcast in different ways. He explained it way, way simple because I guess he's, he's, he's in a different place, Martin. So he can, in, yeah, as everything in life, it just in moves, you know? So what he says, sometimes I catch him two times, like what I think he's contradicting himself with, uh, with things that he's saying in the podcast, for instance, from the post dance uh, article. Anyway, that, that's to say that some, that, um, Yeah, that, I think that this idea of a thing is something that is in, it comes from like, like art in a way, if, or if you think like the, a thing is something that is not yet, a thing is a compromise, basically. A thing is a compromise between something that I don't understand. I don't know what is yet. I, I know it's in my head, but it just eludes my semantic, eludes my language because I don't know how to name it. So it loots the shape of my linguistic, yet not the semiotic of the meaning, because I know what is it. It's something that eludes my language, but know the meaning of what is. Okay. You see what I mean? I, I think it's something, 
I, I think it's something that is something that I don't know, or for whatever reason, I decide to name a thing without instead of saying the book or instead of like mentioning it specifically, I just compromise my speaking and then, then I just mention it as a thing. So it eludes my language for whatever reason. Might be because I want it or I don't know, it might be different reasons. So it eludes the linguistic reason, but yet it cannot elude my, my semiotic. It, it goes to some, it comes from a place in my brain. Uh, I know it's a thing. It's just not anything, it's a thing. And I think that, and yeah, so, and that's in relation just to myself, like me. And, and what it makes it more interesting is when I have to talk about the thing, whatever thing is it, with somebody else, like with you, it means again a compromise because it means that we both need to compromise and say like that thing, you know, like we both need to agree that is that thing, but not the other thing. Um, and so on and can become more abstract or something. Um, but it's always a compromise uh, in that sense. And, but in itself, a thing is like the is like the painting in the bucket, you know, like before a, 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 a thing is something that is free and beautiful in itself. So I think it doesn't, a thing before I start thinking on the thing, it doesn't have to deal with all my linguistics in Spanish, in English or other languages. It doesn't have to deal with my semiotic in relation to my languages. Uh, it's just a thing in the void. It's just something that is there. It's like imagine this like is this book, and if I if I don't have to relate to the book, it will be just a thing. It will be free as a thing, and it has no binary position because it's just a thing. It has no performativity whatsoever. It becomes performative or representative at the moment that I have to mention it to you and come into compromise it with somebody else and mentioning this thing so I take it from the void and it loses this freedom um, and in that relation I think is um, like art like or uh, art how I understand now or I would like to believe it is is something that is tries to escape as much as possible the form the book the thing but it passes and become a book sometimes, it represents, it plays in culture, which is ecology, which means money. Um, and it, yeah, and it do what it needs to do in order to, I don't know what it happens with art these days. I don't know, what is it? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, I will slightly shift the topic. I mean, it's, it's uh, related, but I take a detour. Um, mm -hmm. I was watching, minority report a few days ago okay um i love it yeah it's very nice yeah well i don't watch movies a lot so you know like uh like these days i have more time so <laughs> i try to watch, you watch it before no it's first time and then wow, okay. uh, cool the interesting point what was interesting was because they predicted who um he's gonna kill right like he's gonna shoot someone like he like the one uh, who was the cop tom yeah cruise. yeah what was his name again <laughs> tom cruise yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, anyways um what's the character's name i forgot but so he's gonna so he watched he saw that crime scene and uh also saw that the the name of the the guy who's gonna be shot right mm. but that's the first time he saw it and then he looks for that person i forgot that, that name but anyways but then that name that uh that tom cruise thought that the guy who killed or kidnapped his son that name just came abruptly from the prediction yeah and it came from nowhere in a way like if there's no prediction there is no way to know that name i mean and in the end it turned out that 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 was not the guy who 
kidnap the, the son. But, but what I want to say is that name just came from somewhere, like really, really arbitrary. But it was not arbitrary because it was in that Planned. world, it, yeah. it was these people who are supposed to have the truth, to dream the truth. Yeah, let's say that's a, the truth. Yeah. 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 They dream the truth or something like that. Yeah. And that name showed up in that, yeah. that dream. Yeah. So, so I was thinking, what is it? And what if it was, it was not a name or it was like, um, well, <laughs> because it's a movie, it has to be a name that people can understand. But if it was like an unpronounceable word or something that is, you know, completely um, makes no sense then yeah. it still works in a way. I mean, for as a plot, it still works. Uh, as a movie, probably it doesn't work because people won't really get the point. Um, but yeah, like what if they dreamed about this word that is completely irrelevant and nonsense, and then, but then still Tom Cruise can, you know, look, look for that, search for that person. Um, yeah. And then that that is like the reason why like the reason why I'm saying is well pretty, pretty obvious. But this thing can be something that has completely um, you know a name that is not sensible. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or like or can. like or like a causal or perce uh, perceivable through senses through our senses. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Or we can just say that it's an apple, although it's not an apple, but um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it's just like open thing. I don't have anything to say anymore, but uh, I just thought that it's, it's interesting how it, you brought it up and I, what I was thinking kind of overlapped. But I, th I think it's very, do you want to say something else? No. I think it's like this that you're saying is very interesting in the sense of, you know, because this, it seems like he's like, a, if you, if we go back to the example of the movie, that's one of my, I really like that movie. Um, it is in relation to like those humans, like those hum humanoids, these weird uh, uh, twins who are super weirdos and they are like, they have the same position of in the Greek theater of the oracle, oracle, you know, like they just speak the truth from time to time. And then, and, and the reason, that, but the, the interesting thing is like, even so they are so mysterious, they, they are something that in the movie, they shape it as that, but it's beautiful in itself because, so it just, it, let's say it works more or less for the movie but it's in Greek times or always like they, this oracle thing is just something that is mysterious. And it just, as we said, mentioned before, it just escapes the sensibles, you know, like we might need to put it as two twins because it helped to the representation for the movie or whatever, but it's just something that escapes our comprehension. It just goes beyond and, and, and it works like that. Is like the same, it's like they, they exist as in a black box, you know? It like it's the same idea that we don't need, we don't know. I mean, if you think in Christianity, like the world in general, like we don't know who is God, we don't know him, but we know he's there. We don't know to met him since always. Um, and, and yet the world has been built, Western world based on that God exists black box idea the same idea it's an abstraction that we agree upon and we are okay with and what i think is so that's one thing that i wanted to say the other thing is that is that it's so i think that's just makes me a bit angry like this idea of like i think that's very western like the this beautiful magnanimous like holy thing becomes is minimized to a tool because imagine this thing is so powerful and divine that we cannot understand with our senses yet they have to put it so into it becomes a tool that is being used in that uh, society 
to tell them who is the next person who's going to commit a crime. If you really think about it, it's, it's really, it's really, I mean, it's really is the worst thing. If you imagine these things are so beautiful and they're just diminished to, okay, now just you're telling the cop who is the next one who is going to make the crime and stuff. This is one thing that I found is, is very uh, neoliberal in the sense that just very abruptly says like, okay, God or this thing is in function of the Western guy. And it just, it will help us to make the society runs better. So this is one thing. And, but I think, yeah, what I was trying to mention is this idea of this is minimizing this abstraction into a tool and in which in itself is not bad because it's helping the, the people, the society, like their world in the, in the movie. What I think is that I will be more in pro, and I mentioned that in the application, uh, in fact, is that instead of the tool, because a tool is always uh, one-sided, like tool always has a mean, you know, like the tool is there to fulfill, fulfill a, a, a task. Um, instead of tools, you have uh, technologies. The technologies are open-ended. You know, they are, they are, are more frameworks to things for things to happen. They, are, they don't have in, in, in itself an ob objective. Um, yet, then you then then there are tools that are happening. Are and, and tools you can relate also as techniques in dance also. Then and classical uh, dance and, and art also is based a lot in technique. Uh, even while people nowadays in modern days, they try to say no, in a way is becoming, I think more yes, because it's just the techniques are no flat and are not, let's say as cubism, uh, uh, impressionism, they are not the isms. They are not just counting one by two by three by four, but it's just everything is an implosion. So it's like now you, it's not that you are not supposed to work with techniques, but in a way you're supposed to know everything. I mean, that's the, that's the neoliberal uh, perspective. I, that's my, my, my idea. What I, but maybe we are, David, what I was trying to say with, with uh, what I'm saying now is that, this is a tool, that was a tool. Like th these people are a tool. And I think a tool is not bad per se, but uh, I think it will be more interesting to work in frameworks where you can use more, or you can be more with technologies uh, than with tools, because in a way tools are related with knowledge and they are absolute in the sense a tool works, doesn't works toolboxes and so on and so they're related to knowledge and instead technology as related to uh, how to say not to knowledge but to competence you know uh, technology is more related so yeah the tools are related to knowledge and uh, technologies to competence a competence are not they don't deal with absolute knowledge a competence is some is something that is more broad you are competent in doing things but you're not supposed to be a master in it right and there are different ones like the second one is more inviting to things for happening like the yeah the competence while the other one is more excluding if you don't know the tools you are excluded you, you cannot participate of the group. You need to be part of the, like the tool is one-sided and it has an end, a, pro a purpose in itself. I have a question. Um, what are the examples in our practice, practices? Like, let's say like, like for example, we use Live Lab to begin with, or uh, I mean, we have computer and internet, but let's say we have Live Lab, is it a tool? in a sense, or is it? That's a good question. Like, is, is, is it Live Lab? What, what do you think? Is it Live Lab a tool? 
I think, I mean, the way why I see it is like, Live Lab is a tool itself, you know, it's a toolbox in itself, but in the framework, in the framework that I try to take as a, take Live Lab as an element, and therefore then it loses the, the tool, uh, the tool uh, idea. That's how I see it. I mean, I'm trying to, like when we're doing that, and it's not easy because by, let's say, by the way how it's being proposed in itself, I think it's a toolbox. Like uh, I just read something that uh, Olivia put in, in a festival that she's participating in Brussels. It's called the Oscillator Festival. It's happening for the, in the next weekend. I'll send you the link. She will do something there. I didn't know. And anyway, she was just mentioned that um, and the way how she's described Hydra as, is as a tool for network something. I mean, like to basically a video conference something, an alternative for performances. So she sees it as a tool, like the way how she proposes there is as a tool. So I think it comes from being a tool, but in the framework of how we're trying to do, and I think that's what it makes it the practice it's just we try to basically unshape the thing and then just to to do things with it but i don't know how you see that this this is like um difficult like wording is always difficult for me like what is hydra it's not a language it's a javascript so technically it's she didn't invent a language it it is a library for javascript a library but yeah. i usually write it's an environment because that's where you, you land and do something. Yeah. So in a broader perspective, also like when I work with Hydra and let's say I have specific visuals, but I will I will try to avoid saying that's an effect. Like, you know, you can add something to your camera feed on your body to morph into something, but, and I, Often, first, I try to write, you know, Hydra to add this effect, but it's not an effect because it's, uh, if you write an effect that's, that separates what's happening in the camera and what's happening as a post-production, but that's not what I mean, because it's something more blended that is but you mean like you mean, Yeah, sorry. You mean, you mean, you mean that the effect as a shader, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, is, just like, it is a shader and it, it is it can be thought as an effect, but if you say it's an effect, then it implies that you have this layer of um, like abstraction, layer of camera, and then you have something on top of it and something you add on top of it as an effect or special effects or whatever, um, yeah. shader or whatever. But that, that's something that um, separates from the camera or the body which I think it's not right. Also, it separates the effect from the code itself. Because, the way, because the thing I don't understand, I want to follow, but the thing I don't understand, I, I, I got lost like, so then you see you, you see in that the effect are, effects are in a different category than what will be in the code and the camera? If I say effect, it's, it's separate from code and camera and and the real space. Okay. But if you say it's, let's say this is a visuals that visuals or code itself, what is happening is actually the code, then that is the code. And it doesn't say that, it, you know, it's not, it's not emphasizing on the, the, the outcome. Yeah, maybe that's, that's the point. It's not the outcome, but it's the, the process. And the code is the process and effect is just the, the very end of the process. Yeah, maybe, I mean, the way, hope, because I think there is something interesting of what you're saying is that, I don't know, I might misinterpreting what, what are you saying, but I think if, I mean, understanding like effect and effects and different things, you know, like effect, effects, yeah, like the easy idea to like make a difference would be with effects, you know, as a post-production or like something more as a shader and the effect that you can put an effect on anything, you know, the effect on like just the effect that's coming from the word in English, the effect. 
um, it gives, I think it's very interesting because it gives uh, um, space to think of both as separately. Um, yeah. And, and although at the end you will have some effects, you know, you will have some effects like post effects, some you will do something with the codec and it becomes an effect. And if an effects, I will make I'll call it like effects to make it easy for me. Um, then what I think is interesting is that the effect that is causing in you doing and in what you are transmitting to me in the practice, it might affect me. It, this, this effect, it causes me and it's an affection to me. You see what I mean? Does that make any sense what I'm saying? Um, sorry, I don't know what I want to say. Well, I want to say that I don't like effects or effect, but there is an effect that happens. Like what you receive is the, the effect. Yeah, what I receive is the effect, yeah. yeah. But from my perspective, or you know, the, from the first person, it's not just the, the end result as an effect, but there is something that leads to the effect. There is something the that code that leads to the the effect that is the code that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is one thing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But in a way, you don't have to know the code that I'm writing. No, I don't have to, no. that's something that you have to deal more than, and then, yeah, in that example, because I have to deal with my own. It's kind of similar to this idea of black box in a way. It's part of a black box. And then we go mm. in like within, within folders, you know, because like for instance, in a, in a, in a more global idea, I don't need to know who, what is the, who is the, what is happening in what you're doing for me to have the affection, I will call it. Affection is literally the result of an effect. So, so I, I don't need to understand, to, to be in a, for being affected, I don't need to know what is your coding. Um, so in that, in that global sense, and yeah, from there, and then if you want to go more in deep, you can know partly of what you're doing, but maybe you don't need to know the terminals of your computer. You know, you don't need to know how, like you don't need to go so low level and so on and so on. So it's still, I think this is something that maybe we should consider that this idea of the black box is something that we deal with it, but not only us, it's like the world in general deals with this idea of black box as with God and just in general, we, because otherwise we cannot live with it. That's the problem that we as humans have, that we have conscious and the body, you know, that if we will be all the time conscious, like, oh my God, but how this is working, you know, how is electricity passing through right now? And you cannot leave, you know, how my arm can move right now, how is passing the, you cannot leave. Yeah. So then you have to do this exercise constantly of negotiation of self-distanciation, basically, and trusting the slave or the master, like in, in Hegel's words, like the mind and the body, like, it's a constant negotiation of like just trusting basically. Uh, but at some point you need to go back to your cave and rethink things. Like for is like otherwise we wouldn't be doing this one. That is like, although I trust that what you're doing is I don't need to know in, in, in the practice, is, is it still necessary for me to talk about it now? Right. Um Going back a little bit, um, so you said about, yeah, we, we just received the effect. But to be honest, like I always find that, especially in contemporary dance, I enjoy taking workshops more than watching a performance. Performance, I, I see that as an, the effect of their yeah, practice, yeah. let's say, and the workshop is the, their process. and. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know how people think. Probably I'm not the only one. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it also depends on the situation, I guess. Uh, depends on the piece itself, piece. you know? But yeah, yeah but in, if, you, if you mention it like that, it's because you should have your own opinion. But I understand, yeah, go on. 
uh, well, that's that's where it is. But but that's something <laughs> that also like the reason why I maybe I think emphasize on the code, for example, in my case, because it's not that it should be taken as um, something to um, something behind the scene, but it could be something that I mean, it it has this, you know potentiality or whatever you call that is that becomes something or that can affect other things effect is already there and you just receive it and th of course there is potentiality that how you receive it is up to you or up to the viewers can you repeat what you what you just said because i think I, you lost me in the last part okay oh because um the code has the code can become different things. It's not, uh, I don't know how I can explain it. <laughs> I think you did it good before, but I couldn't follow before. So just try because to find it. Because it has, why does it have potentiality then? Because it has because, it's, because, it's, because it's, nothing, it's nothing yet, no? It's like a thing, a code is a thing in that true. idea that is not yet something it might be something true it has potentiality of become yeah yeah of becoming yeah but the image I, the effect visuals is already there i mean you can receive it as you like but it's already pixels that's rendered You, there was something that I heard yesterday. I don't know from where. Something that I was reading. I'm reading a lot. I'm changing between different books like these days. Somewhere I found that it was very precise and very in that idea of that, around the idea of potentiality or agency of these things, which in a way is how I like to see art or like dance in itself, then in a pure form. Then is that was not about like that if you do like if you're in a, let's say, um, a rush full, uh, like a right process of artistic process or something like this. I don't even know how to mention this. Like if you are doing an artistic process and you are in a good path, let's say, I don't know, like have to be binary in this anymore. But then, then what it happens is then instead of taking decisions or making decisions, you generate possibilities. And that's complete and that's a completely switch you see instead of like if you're painting instead of like deciding if i want to paint red or blue which is making a decision taking the decision then you're actually you're generating the possibility so is is so instead of like closing is opening and is, is it goes in the same idea of the technology and competence you know like like a toolbox will be closing it will be narrowing to blue and, and red but then the technology of the competence instead of will be blue and and red uh, so it will just it will just open possibilities and i think that's something that is very interesting if you think in code uh which is something that is very abstract then yeah it's it's just something that it just in my in my head it resonates from what you said that instead of like taking a decision, you just generate possibility. Or generate, or generate, maybe one can say that instead of making a decision, you generate a decision. And I think that's poetic in me. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't need, like linguistically, it's not completely correct. You generate, or yeah, I think it's correct. Like you generate a decision. Is it yeah. correct? Or more like options, but yeah. No, but then because then it still then it changes a bit the, the spectrum, you see? Because then it's still like I mean the way who I like to see it is like it still is a decision. So you deal with the compromise, and that's the way who I start the conversation. Like I like the, the thing and this idea of compromising, because if you don't compromise with things, they stay they stay floating and then nothing happens, which is okay. Um, but yet if you, and what it means what you compromise with things 
is that you need to slow down and be patient because normally you will be in relation with an, ex an external factor. In this case, you trying to understand my words, but it will be me also just trying to understand my words and then choosing or, and this, in a, this is an exercise that is, is coming in my head when I'm writing, like that uh, this idea of the compromising, um, I think is more, uh, I think, yeah, maybe different words. I think like accepting, like accept, like uh, disagree, agree to disagree is a really horrible passive aggression, passive, aggre passive aggressive attitude um, because it's not compromising. You just let it there for something that is not, is nothing will happen from it. Uh, and it's not, and I think in that exercise of dialect, dialect, dialectic exercise of searching for the truth, so together with, with you or somebody else, is in that exercise, then things might arise. It's not because I might end up with the absolute truth, but because we are actively searching for the truth and then we have to compromise in words. So something that like I call a thing, you call a different thing, uh, you might call a box, then I think in order to, to, to create something that is more stable and actually resonates more in different people, then it, it needs uh, compromises. Otherwise, it's passive aggressive, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really object. That sounds, uh, um, <laughs> something. I don't, I don't object, object. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, no, I was thinking about uh, several things. One thing I found really interesting, I couldn't, I just tried to search it, but I couldn't find the exact word, but, uh, uh, like yesterday I learned that to, to table or to table in or something like that, to table up. I don't know. Like, like this, this ver, uh, table as verb with, I don't know what preposition, but uh, in the States, it means that you postpone that topic. You know, you just let it aside. So, okay. you know, we can, you know, table in at, at this, you know, discussion and uh, talk about something else. But then- And it's called, and it's how you call it, table? I, I have to search it. Um, I table. forgot exactly, but it's, it's I like it. with table. But then uh, in British English, it means that you, use, you set that as a topic. So you talk table. about it, actually. To, to you table something. Something like that, yeah, the, to, okay. to talk about it. So it's like completely opposite, and it's completely confusing, <laughs> which I, I found it really, really nice because I mean, of course, it depends on the top, uh, the the context. You can understand what it means, um, but still, like it has this double meaning, completely opposite, which I found is very nice. That yeah. it kind of um, denies the, the 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 meaning itself. And the other thing I was thinking is, um, yeah, this this comic in Japan, um, it's like a really short one that a guy says, I invented a new letter. And the other guy asks, you know, what, what is that letter? And at, at the end, this guy pronounces, you know, it's a, it's a comic, so it, there's always this speech bubble and yes. you, you say something and that's like this, this letter that they just invented. But it, it's so funny because because it's drawn on the, you know, it's printed. So it, it's the character is saying something, but as a reader, you cannot imagine what he's saying because it's just like completely a uh, random letter that doesn't exist. And which, which kind of, yeah, it, it, you know, give, it's not just giving the room to interpret, but it plays with this, um, this limitation of the, the medium to make it make the agency that like uh, basically i think that was very, very cool like but is there a reaction from the other person 
no i think that's the that's the end it's like you know just like four yeah. um columns and uh, that's it i think it's brilliant though because it really like exquises the medium no yeah and yeah. it was funny because i i didn't like actually read that um comic but it was in one of the exam or something like literature exam or something that they <laughs> they <laughs> and so <laughs> it's not really fun to read that but uh, i i think it's it's really I mean, in a way, it's really creative that these uh, entrance exam, uh, these people chose that as a topic instead of uh, proper literature. Yeah, I see. Proper classic, or it becomes classic literature proper. at the end somehow. Yeah, I see what I mean. I don't know. It's, it's a bit um, detour again, but I think anyways, we need detour to talk about these things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's I mean, just because a, I, do, I, I think it, I think it's good because I mean it, I don't uh, this idea of the, the the medium is the massage have you read that book no read that book like I think I think I told you that like it's, it's just I think I show you that that I was yeah, it's, it's something about it. yeah I will just bring it again you can remind the gap of the gap and to go to the, the bookshelf and find a book and meanwhile I, I don't know what to do I don't have a bookshelf so <laughs> not sure what to do but, but it's also interesting I wish the like choosing the right word is always like this practice or this process of like not just instantly think about come up with the right word effect or code or whatever environment platform not just like picking up the word but if i can actually go to that bookshelf or even library of words and discover that word which might take some time or well, maybe library is not a good idea because you can search it in these days so oh, oh but that's old. actually hmm? sorry you know, just my cat was it's good cat i think crazy this thing like the the medium is the okay. massage what is cool from this is that this is the they call it the media prophet of the 1960s because it was written in the 1960s And it just basically the guy what is, it just writes about and just plays with the medium and, and just talks about the yeah it just it's very it's very interesting because also visual yeah, yeah because it's from in a way like it's very graphic but I found this is this is I mean one of the most difficult exercises like while working with design that I can recognize is how you can create like ambivalent uh, frameworks when we work with design like let me let me let me simplify like how you can in a way create an artistic framework when you work within design because design is problem solving and art is problem making so then is uh, the nature is different So yeah. then basically how then you can still like give a space to create that frameworks while you're using graphic design, you know, or typography of whatever design practice that you want to do. I think it's a very, very complex exercise because you need to respond to a client, which is the freedom that art doesn't deal with. Art doesn't, art doesn't deal with the client and it doesn't need to solve a problem. Doesn't need, doesn't need to deal with these things. So then taking that role in design and doing that sub with it, uh, when I sometimes you see that it, it happens in design, I think are just like, this is, is wonderful because it's very, very, very rare. And one is still will my argue, and I read that also somewhere yesterday, that is never, never uh, absolute truth or honest because at the end it will always uh, just fulfill the role for the client or for the business like 
it, that was something that I was reading about web design or something. And it was a, it's a book that I was reading about making, like taking design decisions or something. I don't remember, like something about how to communicate your design decisions with your stakeholders, basically, to win their trust and things like that. Because basically they deal with abstractions of, because it's creativity as we do, but they constantly have a boss in top that they need to sell their ideas, designers, I mean. So th this book was about it. And then since I'm working on this abstraction for my final work, then I need to like learn how to simplify these things to just uh, pass the minimal bile product they call in design. Like this is the minimum thing for them to understand and like it. A part of all my gibberish about art that might not be necessary for them to know. Um, but anyway, so in that book, they were saying that there was about like this and this. And at some point, the guy was saying that somebody who works with art and design, he said like, at the end, even though when you create this really wonderful and it takes a lot of time frameworks that you take carefully time to make together the thing between art and design, at the end, it will or be for, it will be for a client or not, or it will be just art, you know? If his art is free and doesn't have to respond to things, but if it's for a client, it's just uh, ended. Uh, I mean, it, the client must like it, and that's it. So but yeah. it's 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 funny because I was just thinking about um, the artwork I recently saw. Uh, it's online work, and I don't know if it's relevant. I hope it's relevant. Um, so it's it's like a website where I don't know there are like many icons and you click on it and it shows up another page as iframe and uh, it shows like random uh, writings that uh, like like a list of names it's supposed to be like artist names but it's all like synthesized like not not based on the the real person but then there's also like random um comments from the, the interviews or curators or the you know they talk about the concepts of the art but it's all like uh, generated by a machine and that's that's the artwork and it's just a bunch of these collection of these texts and if you click on another icon that shows another uh, similar frame that says all these uh um synthesized uh, text and that's i mean i think it's well made uh, i know the artists they are teaching at our school so i know them well and but then of course i like to look at how it's made or what's what's inside because it's not really clearly obvious that it's um generating in real time or is it even like synthesized or it's like based on the real um writing or artist so i looked of course it's a web uh, work so of course i show uh, open the console and the the inspector on the web like the developer options and there are like a bunch of errors coming out because uh, I think so something was wrong. And that's like constantly, like every frame, it's generating errors. And it's already like 10,000s of errors in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, then also, like, I looked, okay, it's actually iframe. Like, it's not obvious, like, but uh, it's just iframe that's uh, loading from a um, separate page, whatever, dot HTML. It, it's quite, um, how do I say, it's really handmade. It's not like uh, full of JavaScript. I mean, they use JavaScript for some animations and uh, like text has some animations that uh, respond to the JavaScript, but actually these texts are um, stored in a JSON file that actually points to their GitHub. <laughs> and uh, what else? Uh, so it's not like uh, the machine is not making it in real time, but all these texts but are but, stored. But their database, the, the JSON is at least stored on their site or? Uh, it's on it's on github and um, but is the github there is there github or is somebody else also it, it's their github it's it's their repository that they they prepared for this project uh it, it has like a bunch of json files for the, for the project and yeah. uh yeah I, I just started looking into it and then I, then i wrote to them you know like i i found it's really nice that it's really handmade and uh they they told uh they were complaining that you know um I don't know how much I can say it in this uh, public chat, but uh, yeah, like basically bullshitting about the, the, the organizers or the curators in the museum 
and uh, you know they somehow had to do it uh, first with the help of uh, like real uh, web developers, but they fucked it up. So the artists themselves had to code it by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't know how to do it. I mean, so they just, I mean, yes, but not they, that much. Yeah. They have been doing, you know, like these things quite a lot, but they're not developers, they're artists. They're not developers. Okay, yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that, that, that was so interesting to yeah, hear, yeah. but it's still like, you know, it's it's an art piece. It's not like a, but they're yeah, still yeah. like you know commissioned. So it has this similar to client based work, a client work that they had to deliver something to the museum, and even though they are assholes, and they you know don't help you, they the artists. I mean, artists can propose what they want to do, but in the end, they have to put something together yeah. to show it on the museum yeah, yeah, website. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. of course, it's different from design, but it's still, there is, I don't know what's, what's the right word. It's not a hierarchy, but it's, there is this relation to other ent entity. And yeah. there's always this tension. And that's yeah. what I found really, really, um, I, I, I shouldn't say funny, but it, it is funny, to be honest. But, it's, but, but I think it's interesting because that, I mean, I think I have one, two things to say. Like, I think one is that, I think that that um, workflow, it's something that you, you will, I will call, that's uh, what? Mm, faking. That comes from this idea of faking in art. I think at some point, like early, like one year ago, I was sharing this idea. Faking is this idea of like, Martin, Martin was super into doing this faking of like fake healing or faking. That is like, you are doing something the best that you can in something that I cannot. So I will start reading Russian for you in this book. And then I just make a performance out of it. And then I do my best for real to just try to do it. But because I cannot, it just becomes something dense in itself. So in that, in, I make the relation with the work of the, of the artists because they're not developers. Yeah, they have some minimal competence. That's going back to this idea of competence. They still need to be beginners. If they have no absolute clue, I think we will not, we could not consider in, in this idea of faking because you need to be competent at least and then go on. If, if they will have no idea, sorry, sorry? To present in a certain way. I don't understand. If you're reading Russian in whatever you know way, you to, but you, and, still, and you still have, have to be competent enough to present it. Or if you put a network, a net net art somewhere, you have to be competent to show it as a net art. I think I think I think what I'm saying with the, the competence is like because I think I was more narrow in the sense of if if in my example is I want to read this book is in Russian and I want to do a performance about it then it means I need to have some notion at least of how to read some of the vowels because it's not a normal uh, abecedary. So I need to be, I need to have at least a, a, a minimum amount of sure. competence because otherwise it will be not faking. That will be something else, but not the faking. Okay, okay. I think to be considered as faking, then you need to have a, a, a minimum of competence that allows you to for the things to unfold in certain way that you cannot foresee because you don't master the thing. If I will master the thing, I can control it. I will try to, that's what we do normally in the, in the world. So that was one thing. And the other one was the faking and the other one, what was it? Ah, yeah, then this that, I think is that it's interesting because so like yeah then what the artists in that example that you 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 provide were so they were working with a deadline and although so that uh, and then they're working with this they're working for the museum so it's like art work working for the culture yeah that's a, that's a, coming back to the idea of ecology because this is the art that is just just trying to like, uh, like is something that it doesn't have shape and they don't know how to deal with it, but they're working on it and they have to force themselves to, to perform basically their arm piece into the culture. 
because the culture is the, and the, or the institution is then the museum needs, uh, they're forcing them to, you need to do it this in certain way because otherwise you cannot be here. You cannot be paid and so on. Um, it has, it has to be efficient. It has to be a fit for the culture. I think it has to be, I don't know if efficient. I, I think yeah, one could say it is neoliberal. So I, I will say yes, yeah. It has to be efficient enough, let's say, because still we're talking about culture. Yeah. So it has to I'm be just efficient. Saying because, uh, I remember Martin was saying in the podcast. Yeah, but Martin was saying about that in the podcast. Like the, I think the, that leads to the, the question of efficiency if you um, talk about culture. Yeah. Yeah. So Which you, don't want, to, you don't want art to, art to mix up with culture, then art cannot be efficient. No, no, because then it's then it's performing, and art doesn't have to perform. You know, like like the, I mean, then it, it it comes again to the idea of performativity or or representation. Like in the pure sense, I think art doesn't have to do anything more than just not be. I think art in a pure sense is what I was trying to write, or like in my 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 ideas, like art is a thing that is not yet there is not that I'm not even calling in that example of my right like in, in the way how I started conversation is I say like the thing is something that is there is like the book that I'm not yet know that I will take it's just a thing it has no and it's so beautiful in itself because there is nothing binary in in the in the thing it's just a thing but then at the moment that I start doing my wishes, desires, and so on, and put it in different frameworks, culture, neoliberalism, and identities, like so on. It just it just becomes a mess, which is art, and and it's it's, and it's art. Um, but then I think, and I think that example we do a good work uh, in this with the with the practices because then we are conscious that we we using tools. Like I mean, we do we use tools, but we try to not stay with the tools. Like there is there you, but I mean, we do constantly this exercise from folding and folding, grouping and, and grouping, like, like we question constantly, not yet not rational as possible, what we do in the doing, not the exercise that we are doing now that is different. This is just pure, some, this is just basically you and me trying to talk through English. That's a different thing. This is not art. I don't know, I, I wouldn't say this is art. But this then I will say more is not. No, this can it's be little... interpreted or can be become something, but it, this itself is not to make. I agree art. with you. Yeah, because yeah. It, it can be art, I guess, if you take this that we are doing and we put it in with other things, it can become art, I think. But yeah, I agree with you. In itself, is it is not art in itself. It's not the thing. It's not just that thing. Uh, because it's more. We are just we are charged mm. just. With the different thing and going to the example of the artist in the museum so like art in relation to the uh institutions of culture. so art in relations to culture the culture is neoliberal and is is efficient art doesn't have to be efficient yet needs to eat you know like so then you need to perform and then you you adjust the art in order to just leave like anybody else and i think this and that's a point where i'm i think more lately um i am from my uh, understanding from my place of privilege that is like i'm questioning this like since i'm privileged in the place that i live and the way who i live that i can work and do things that i want then i'm just questioning that I mean, because at the time to actually think what I normally do is perform a way of do my art and a way to be uh, uh, it's this. So what, what I'm saying is that I'm questioning my my doing in relation to culture. Uh, understanding what you in, in terms of like, yeah, learning how to write, learning how to be in Belgium, how to be in Germany, how to write in Holland, how to, I'm question, I'm start to questioning this because I'm in space of privilege. 
uh, I will be in another place and I have no time to think of this thing and to spend time in, the thing, in, in thinking of the thing and, and so on, then, then just you leave. Uh, but because I have the time to think of the thing, <laughs> then, then I'm, but then I start slowly questioning as well, and I start and start understanding also my my relation towards my identities and my understanding also that I don't want to hijack things. That was something that I learned partly in the exercise with you guys. It's like, although it was important for me to say something as well, I am to necessarily need to hijack something for me to express me uh, and yet to just uh, compromise but going back to this idea of just yet compromise with the cause in that sense to write an application together with you and another person um, but this is something that is getting more clear and more like more, more question in this like it's me in this context I'm not from here uh, and different like so it is getting giving more signs of what does that mean see that is very because it's always in relation to culture i think yeah um i think we should close around here but yeah. i just thought about something wanna... um something funny that like what does it mean that i'm privileged and i'm not uh, or how i would not be and just imagining like if I have to go back to Japan and somehow I have no other job to do. So I have to go to McDonald's and um, make hamburgers all day. But then what if I think that how my life is in Germany is actually uh, at a McDonald's that I produce a thing all day. Maybe that's I don't know if that, that analogy makes sense to you, but um, say, say it again because I lost the last part. So, so yeah. just 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 thinking that you know if if I don't have time means that uh, I have to work at McDonald's all day to produce yes. hamburgers, but then if I think the the way how I'm living right now is actually at um, McDonald's that produce a thing all day. And I'm yeah. just uh, at the kitchen of McDonald's to produce a thing. I don't know. It's just, yeah. I don't know. But like, then, yeah, I understand what you said, but uh, what I don't understand is like, then what are you trying to say is then, then, then is it, is it a, like a positive thing or as a negative thing or? It can be either way, I think. But it's because, not, I mean, the way, who, the, the way who I'm seeing is that if you are working something, if you're just making a thing, in that case, hamburgers is one thing, and you're just so busy that you don't have time to think about the thing, just you do your thing, <laughs> and then you're just making hamburgers, right? Then I think you are living in one hand a simple life, but at the same time, I think it's good. Because you are in one, because then you are just busy and you just do one thing. I don't know. And then, yeah, but I in mean, the other hand, I would think, yeah. That that kind of you know, it's it. Well, I'm not saying this is becoming repetitive, but it can fall into that you know problem that I will be stuck in the kitchen. Or other way of interpreting that analogy would be that. It's not like we're, you know, sitting on the beach and think about the thing, but we have to still live in the capitalistic world and produce a thing within that frame. I mean, that's another thing that, another <laughs> interpretation. I don't know. It's yeah, yeah, just yeah. random thing. No, no, it's no, not that no, it's I... completely, it's completely, yeah. Because, I mean, this is an act of privilege. That when they were just, the being on the beach and just like this that we do is an act of privilege. And just like giving them the space of to think about the thing to think about the thing uh, but yeah totally i completely agree with you because then you need to have the time anyways let's close it here and um, this is too long this is too much time it has been for more than one hour time yes okay thank you thank you for watching